Relationships shape our brains. A feminine perspective on attachment and parenting styles. Your brain patterns itself in response to experiences. Relationships are powerful experiences and so relationships change your brain. Karen Honey was a contemporary of Freud's and she was a psychoanalytical Freudian <laughs> but she became disillusioned, frustrated with some aspects of Freud's theoretical framework and she challenged him and she critiqued these <clears throat> and she developed a much simpler, more intuitive model for understanding the personality development of the child called interpersonal styles. And so she says that the child has basic needs for security and satisfaction and if those basic needs are not met then they are the basic responses of hostility or anger and anxiety or fear and the basic movements against, away or towards the parent. Now Mary Ainsworth, um, she was, uh, she had a difficult troubled relationship with her own mum and she had a close bond with her father but the mum was always interfering and uh, jealous of their relationship and so from a young age she was very sensitized to this um, things that can go wrong with the mother-child bond. She came up with this brilliant um, experiment, you know, uh, it's called the strange situation. And so in this experiment they put a mother and a child in a room and there's some toys and things for the child to uh, play with and explore and then they ask the mother to leave the room and then they observe, observe the child's response. So the whole idea is to create a, a stressful situation and then observe how the child responds to to that. And then, yeah, there's some other aspects to it. You know, when, when the mother returns to the room, they observe the reunion um, behavior between mother and child and then a stranger comes into the room and they observe it because that's also a stressful experience for the child. So anyway, <laughs> um, so they, uh, by observing they were able to categorize these different attachment styles. So Mary Ainsworth came up with three which is the secure style. Okay, <laughs> I've got a slide on that. Um, secure, insecure, resistant, insecure, avoidant, and then uh, her student Mary Main uh, uh, observed and differentiated and distinguished the disorganized style. So Mary Ainsworth had lumped it in with the uh, other style, I think the resistant style, but Mary Main and her students kind of teased it apart and so we have these four basic attachment styles. And here you can see this warm, affectionate bond between mother and child. So um, in the secure pattern, when the mother left the room, then the child became quite upset and distressed and went to the door and even cried. Um, and as soon as the mother came back into the room, the child went into mother's arms and the mother was able to comfort her and soothe her. And very quickly the child relaxed again and continued playing and exploring the room. But now in the insecure resistant pattern, um, when the <clears throat> mother left the room then the child became quite destabilized and um, um, like crying vehemently and um, when the mother came back into the room then the child showed hostility towards the mother uh, hitting or kicking or shouting or uh, you know and it took a long time for the for these kids to calm down again and uh, you know they tend to move against the parent and they tend to be stuck in this uh, difficult emotion and hostility 
Now, in the insecure avoidant pattern, when the, the mother left the room, then the child shows no response, like there's no crying, there's no movement to, to find the parent, the child just continues doing what they're doing. And when the mother comes into the room, also there's no response and no reaction. And so people thought that these kids weren't feeling anything, but further research studies have shown, I mean, they, they placed like things on the kids and they're able to check uh, the internal state and they find that yes, these kids are actually in a significant amount of distress, just like the other two kids. But their response is to hide their feelings, hide their emotions and um, dampen their response. You know, so, I mean, we'll get into why you have these different patterns. It will become clearer later. So, <clears throat> in the disorganized state, when the mother leaves the room, the child becomes quite um, discombobulated, <laughs> confused, and they have a mixture, disjointed reactions. You know, they uh, don't react, then they overreact, then they dissociate and they collapse on the floor in a like fetal state, then they zone out, then they scream and uh, uh, yeah. So, what is going on? What's what's causing this different pattern of uh, relationship between mother and child? You know. So initially, people thought that it was uh, something inherent in the child, you know. But Mary Ainsworth's work and and many others have shown that it's actually a function of the way that the parent is treating the child habitually, consistently, day to day, week to week, month to month. It's the nature of the mother-child relationship, the bond. So along comes Diana Baumrein talking about exactly this, parenting styles. And she presents a dimensional model looking at the two um, factors or dimensions of responsiveness or care and demandingness or discipline, ability to discipline and uh, the balance between them. of finding the Goldilocks zone. And so this parent is too hard. This parent is too soft. This parent is just wrong. This parent is just right. So on the one axis we have the responsiveness and care of the parent and on the other we have the demandingness and ability to discipline. So the parent who's lower on responsiveness but high on demandingness and discipline with lots of expectations and punishments and um, that's the authoritarian parent who's too hard. Now the parent who's low on demandingness and has difficulty doing discipline but high on responsiveness and care and always wants to please the child and uh, keep the child happy is the permissive parent who's too soft. The parent who's low on both scales is uninvolved and that's just wrong. Now the parent who gets this tricky balancing act just right is the authoritative parent. So to introduce some more common terminology, um, we can talk of the neglecting and abusive parent and the supportive parent. And yeah, so now let's look at how that maps onto Karen Horney's interpersonal styles. Looking at increasing anger or the movement against the parent on the one axis and increasing fear and the movement away from the parent on the other axis. So the supportive parent raises the secure, attuned child. The authoritarian or harsh parent raises, uh, creates the avoidant attachment style and the emotion is fear, the dominating emotion is fear, but also anxiety and shame. The permissive parent 
creates the resistant attachment style or more commonly known as the spoiled child or the spoiled brat. The neglecting abusive parent generates the disorganized attachment style and disorganized is not a, a very descriptive word like you use that to describe someone whose desk is messy, they disorganized. But here we're talking about the complete psychological meltdown and distortion and with dissociative features, you know, so I prefer the term chaotic or disturbed. So while the men were very busy with this cognitive revolution, uh, the Susan M. Johnson was pioneering emotion focused therapy and she was doing work with couples applying attachment theory and attachment science to helping people to navigate their difficult relationships. You know, why husbands and wives are at loggerheads and can't seem to understand each other. And the key was to help them to understand their attachment styles and to help them to shift it in, in a way that changes the dynamic and improves the relationship. And so she helped many couples through understanding their relationship styles and overcoming relational trauma using emotion focused therapy so she really took attachment theory and attachment science to the next level you know uh, applying it and um, yeah so let's explore what she has to say we are first and foremost a social relational and bonding species over the lifespan the need for connection with others shapes our neural architecture our responses to stress, our everyday emotional lives and the interpersonal dramas and dilemmas that are at the core of those lives. 